Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Brew House Art Studio. And while I don't know if this is a tutorial or a tip of the day, I don't really know what category this falls in. I guess it's kind of a tutorial. Uh, I want to talk about hands. Hands is one of those fingers in particular uh, are one of those things that, especially when you're new in the industry, you may not understand kind of how they function or work or you you have an idea but you're not quite getting the results you want uh, so that is what I'm going to talk about today how do I deal with hands and fingers in a production and uh, and so anyways let's let's get started and like anything you have to start off with a strong foundation and the strong foundation comes all the way back down to modeling and setting up your joints and when you're dealing with a character, it's very important as an animator to get in there and kind of give the, the model a look-see. Um, we call it a fitting uh, or a stress test, if you, if you will. We stress test the, the joints and we just kind of see how they work. So when I get in and look at a hand for the first time, I'm going to look for a few things. I'm gonna, first, I'm going to look at the metacarpals, which are these joints inside the hand right here. And I'm going to look at their local rotation values. And then I start going down the fingers and I start looking at the fingers and I look at their local rotation values as well, uh, just to kind of see if everything looks like it is oriented in the correct direction. And if I go around this finger uh, or this hand and start clicking on these individual metacarpals, you can kind of see that they are actually, maybe rotation will be a little bit easier to see. Uh, you can see that they are slightly rotated oh that's the thumb they are slightly rotated into the uh, into the palm which is what we want the second thing is I'm going to look at these fingers and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to look at them and I'm going to rotate them and I'm going to just see if they function correctly so I set up a few keyframes here of kind of like a little animation test I do when I first get a, a hand back from a uh, technical animator and uh, what I want to do is I want to grab the fingers on the hand, all of them, and I want to uniformly rotate them. So let me just select them here. I don't, I don't need to include the thumb or the metacarpals at this point, so I'm just going to deselect those. Uh, what I want to do is I want to grab them and I just want to rotate them in, and I want to kind of see how that hand closes. So I set up a few keyframes here so I can hide, uh, hide those skeletons there. And uh, I can just scrub my timeline. We, I, we can kind of look at what this hand looks like. And so when I close the hand on this mannequin character, which came out of Unreal, uh, I can see that it actually does a pretty good job rotating in. Uh, maybe a little bit pinched, uh, but definitely does a pretty good job uh, just rotating these fingers. And what we wanted, what our goal is for an animate. Uh, or at least when we're delivering a rigged character to an animator, is we want the animator to be able to grab all the controls of the fingers and just select them all and just on one, one, whoa, that was crazy. Uh, <laughs> that's what happens when you select the metacarpals and the thumb. Let's unselect those again. All right, so what we want is we want the animator just grab the controls and just rotate these fingers in. And the controls should be... Uh, oriented the same as the joints, right? Because we want a one-to-one -one between the uh, rig and the skeleton. Uh, but in testing purposes, in a pipeline, and you're stress testing a skeleton, before the character gets rigged, a lot of times you'll get the skinned mesh or a rough skin mesh, and you can sit here and test out the, the joints to make sure everything's working. So anyways, I, I, dig I digress a little bit. So what you want to do is you just kind of want to roll, rotate these fingers in and just kind of see how it feels. As an animator, you want to be able to grab all the controls on the finger and just on one axis, just rotate them in and get a nice, a nice uh, curl, a nice fist. And so that's what I've got here. I've got these selected and, and then I, I'll test the thumb out. Th thumb is a little bit different because it rotates while these two joints here, these two uh, finger joints here and here, let me while this one and this one rotate on a single axis. Uh, this joint here obviously can rotate different ways to kind of achieve the, the fist you're, you're looking for, or the hand shape you're looking for. Uh, so 
I, I kind of I kind of just test the thumb out, but really what I'm looking at is I'm looking at uh, the fingers and the metacarpals. So let me scrub forward, back to here. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna give uh, this. If I were to grade this mannequin, I would say I'd probably give it a solid uh, B plus A minus on uh, whoever set this up. The model is built relatively are modeled relatively well and uh, the joints are set up pretty good um, now let me show you some problems that you may run into with hands and it's a little hard to look at that hand at this angle let's rotate this hand up like this so we can maybe see it a little bit better all right so the next thing I'm gonna look or right, something I want to kind of point out here is um, Sometimes what you'll get is you'll get uh, something like this called pitch, we call them pitchfork pitch fork fingers, uh, where when you rotate the, the fingers, they kind of have the spacing, which is not good. This is something you need to send back to uh, your technical animator to have them fix the rotation. And if the problem stems from the model not being modeled uh, well, then it needs to go back to modeling and the modeler needs to tweak the geo, then the you know, it's, it's kind of this ripple down effect. If, if it's not a hero character, it probably doesn't matter so much. Uh, but if it's a hero character, you really want to have a solid uh, foundation to start animating with. So that's the first problem that we run into a lot. And then the second problem is the opposite, where, where the fingers kind of collapse in on each other and they're just rotated the other direction a little bit too far. And then last but not least, the other big problem that uh, I run into a lot is I call it the mega middle finger. <laughs> it's where the middle finger, for some reason, because the way it's modeled or the joints are set up, is bigger than all the rest of the fingers. So these are definite problems that you'll want to kind of investigate or places to check um, before you get started rigging or, or animating uh, a character's just kind of make sure you have a, a, a good closed fist. Now let's get back to this pose right here. So this is the default mannequin pose. And in my opinion, the fingers are a little bit tight. I'd actually prefer a much looser fist when I ro rotate the fingers in. So I would probably prefer a rotation more like this on my fingers. And then if I were to open the hand back up and then close it back down with the fist, you get kind of this nice loose fist. And the reason why I want a loose fist versus a tight fist is now we're gonna test the metacarpals out and we're just gonna give it that last little 5% of tightening a fist. So here's a, a tighter fist. So if I scrub back and forth between a, a kind of a looser fist and a tight fist, um, I'm gonna say like 80% of the time uh, you're gonna go into a, a loose fist when you're posing the hand. And then that last little 5-10%, you're going to flex these metacarpals, uh, like so. But once, once all of that is uh, taken care of, let me hit back to that fine pose there. Uh, once all that is care taken care of uh, and you're ready to go into Motion Builder or Rig It uh, in, in Maya, you know, well, <laughs> who are we kidding? We prefer to work in Motion Builder. Uh, once we're ready for Motion Builder and we come back in uh, and it's time for us to set up a character, um, something that happens to be missing from this character, and it miss it's missing from a lot of game characters, is an end joint. Now these end joints are not necessary in game, but they really help uh, inside of Motion Builder with, with IK. So we're going to come in here and we're going to put some, some end joints on these fingers. So that's, uh, that's one of the first things that I'm going to do. So on this hand, I'll go ahead and I'll go find these end joints. I'm going to just grab them. And I'm going to hit copy and paste. I'm just going to copy and paste those joints. Bring them back down here because the order of operation of how I selected them, you can see that when I pasted them in, they're, they line right up with the correlating other fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and just parent it. By the way, I'm working in uh, Motion Builder 2025, and something that they have fixed is screen blank in parenting. So that's a really nice um, bug fix that they did here. All right, so let's 
So once I get these joints, uh, these end joints, it really doesn't matter what you call them because they're not going to be exported to game. Or if you try to import them into Unreal, you'll just get a little warning saying, hey, there's joints in this animation that don't exist in the main game character skeleton. You don't have to worry about it. It's, they're going to get ignored. All right, so once I get those fingers in there, let me kind of come back here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag these out like so. And I'm going to, let me uh, get out of x-ray mode here. I'm going to take each one of these joints and I'm just going to place it right on the tip of the geo. I want these joints to sit um, right on the edge because we're going to use these as IK effectors for the fingers. And you can see that I actually have a uh, degree of freedom turned on on the uh, other joints. Let me go grab this. That's something else I do. Not, not on these uh, knuckle joints. I don't turn degree of freedom on. Only, only these joints. And you don't, I know some animators hate this. This is really a user preference. You don't have to do this. It's just something I like to do. Uh, that's why you're seeing uh, degree of freedom uh, being drawn right here. But again, degree of freedom, I, I digress. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm just answering a question that probably somebody's going to ask. Why, why is degree of freedom turned on? Um, but anyways, I'm, all I'm doing is I'm setting these joints uh, right at the tip of the, the fingers. Let me check the thumb. Right about there. Okay, that's looking good. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to go in and we need to add these to our character definition. So I've got my definition set up right here. If I select my right hand, uh, you can see that we have these little gray end joints right up here. Uh, so you can select the thumb. In this case, let me, I got the thumb selected, so I'll go ahead and uh, right click there and I'll assign select the bone. And I'll just go down the list, signing them. And uh, since mirror is turned on, if uh, I had the joints on the other side, they would add them to the, uh, the left side as well, or the opposite side. So add, sign these. All right, so now I've got my end joints set up. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the metacarpals. So uh, obviously you can see them right here. And uh, Motion Builder doesn't call them metacarpals, they call them in-hand joints. So if you go down into your character definition uh, and you scroll down to right in-hand and left in-hand, this is where you set these up. You can see I've already got the left hand set up there. Uh, and if I, I can either drag and drop these in the old school way where I just kind of, see that's the index, uh, drop, drop them in right there, you can see it's populated populated my definition right here or I can just select it and just say sign selected whichever is easiest for you I just want to just wanted to show that there, there's two different ways to add joints to your character definition let me go ahead and sign that and one more sign this all right so now once your end joints have been placed and your uh, or your end joints have been added and your the fingertip joints have been placed, uh, we can go ahead and characterize our character. Um, assuming that you have uh, set up the rest of your character definition. Uh, so let's go ahead and characterize our character, biped. All right. And let's go over to, I'm going to delete his old control rig. And I'm just going to recreate a new control rig for this guy. There we go. So now that I got a new control rig, brand new control rig set up, um, something else I like to do is let me go find wherever, yeah, this control rig here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to select all the hand joints uh, in the character, and I'm going to go over to my properties. Again, this is a user preference, it's really whatever you like best. Go, you can go over to marker settings and um, switch it from bone to stick, and it will look like the rest of your character's uh, control rig. Something else I like to do is, let me pull these out, uh, and this is my right hand right here. In the schematic view, I like to actually kind of 
move these and arrange these in a way so it's easy for me to see so I um, can better tell which finger's which. So I make little hands. That's just my own personal thing I like to do. Then I'll select all my fingers. Uh, remember the thumb does not have a metacarpal, uh, but the other digits do. So I'm going to select those. And I'm just going to change that color maybe to like an orange or just something a little bit off of yellow. And then I'll grab these other, these are the metacarpal um, nodes on the control rig and I will shift it the other way so it's an ever so slight green. And then I collapse these end joints because I really don't need these end joints visible. I'm not really animating them, they're just there for a finger IK. Let me head back over here. So now that I have my, my hand characterized and my character and everything, I can come in here and I can just, I can start animating and I can start posing. I can grab these fingertips and this is what's really cool is, um, oh, go to body mode. Uh, there we go. What's really cool is I can, because the way the control rig works, I can just grab this, the ends of these fingers and just kind of move them around. And it makes posing hands in Motion Builder super, super fast. I watch guys in Maya and other in Blender and Max and all these other applications where they have these like super nice custom control rigs and they have all these buttons and 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 things to, to help animators curl fingers really fast. Still, they are much slower than uh, what I have experienced inside of Motion Builder, just quickly getting in and uh, animating these hands. Just having finger IK is amazing. And if you guys have ever used uh, a rig inside of Maya that um, has full IK on fingers, hey, put that down in the comments because that is something I've always asked for and I've never received from it from anybody uh, in the game industry. It's, it's always like, that's a lot of work. That's that's what I'm told. Um, so let's see. Oh, something else I want to kind of touch on, I just thought of, is when I T-pose my character, let me un... Uh, see. Let me turn off this control rig. Control rig. So when I pose my character in T-pose, um, what I do is I will have my A pose here, which is where the default bind pose is, right? And I will set a key on everything. And then I go to frame 10. I just make my bind uh, take. I call it bind because uh, this is where I'm building my control rig. Uh, I set this up uh, in my T pose. That way I can always easily get back to my bind pose. And one of the big reasons why I do this uh, is because of the fingers. Because when I'm tr putting these fingers into T-pose, let me see if I can show this. Here is my right hand. I'm just going to, I'm just gonna copy that key, come over here and paste that key. So here is the default hand. And when I straighten out these fingers, Uh, when I straighten out these fingers, what I'm actually doing is, uh, I'll just go ahead and I'll just, so when I straighten out these fingers, what I'm actually doing is I'm grabbing uh, all the uh, first knuckle joints in the hand, and in, uh, you can do this, I, I usually do this in global. Uh, global, all I'm doing is I'm just zeroing everything out like that. So I'm, I'm losing kind of that natural twist in the fingers that I was talking about inside of Maya. And this is all for, uh, you know, Motion Builders, uh, the way it characterizes in the character definition. It, it's important to kind of have consistency across all your characters. And that's just one of the ways you can get that consistency is making sure that everything is um, just zeroed out, so to speak. Now I'll grab all the other fingers. The thumb, on the other hand, I usually leave this down default. I know sometimes people put it out straight. Um, it's hit or miss with me. Sometimes making that thumb go straight out like the fingers works uh, pretty well. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, hey, let me know what you guys do. Do you guys make that uh, thumb straight or do you go ahead and just leave it at default or how do you guys handle your thumb? I'm kind of kind of curious what you all do. Me, I just kind of leave it at the default uh, rotation. 
So anyway, once I have that established, uh, I'll go in and start adding my character definitions. So anyways, I kind of want to just kind of touch on that briefly. Let me go back to my control rig. There we go. So let's look real quick again at this finger and look at look at how it's bending. And uh, on purpose, I did not do the left hand the same way. The left hand, I on uh, on purpose, I did not add in that end joint. So if I do this, if I go into my X-ray mode, I can look at these fingers and I can see that um, the IK node is actually here at that that first. Uh, ju joint, that first knuckle. Um, or is that the third knuckle? <laughs> which one's the third and which one's the, the th uh, first? Uh, anyways, it, it's here at the end. So when I start moving the finger around, you can kind of see, let me zoom in here on this. So when I start moving the finger around, you can see that I've got kind of this motion going. And then I have to hit rotate. And then it doesn't quite work out because I have grabbed the IK, the IK handle, which is the red sphere. Uh, you can guess you can kind of get a, get around it by, let's see, grabbing the IK, and then you can twist the IK, and then move the, the finger around, and then, and then do it this way. But I really don't like having to potentially counter animate my, my hands or my fingers. And, and you can do the same thing on the full IK finger. So let me go back over here. Again, this is my first joint right there and I can do the same thing I can if I hit translate I just come kind of come in and I've got that end effector that it goes straight to and and if I want to go to rotate it's rotates back at that first joint I can still get that kind of fidelity so maybe you're pushing a button and you gotta flex that finger up but you kind of still want this full IK control uh, you can you can have it so anyway that is kind of my take on hands and getting them set up and working with um, just working with them from start to finish uh, again it's really important to uh, do a stress test on a skeleton before you ever start rigging and start setting things up you need to kind of make sure everything's working and rotating uh, super important and anyway that's what I do. That's that's how I handle fingers. And if you guys handle hands a different way, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, I think it's great that we can all talk and and learn more and um, and what have you, and just grow this community and all become better animators, better motion editors. Um, and for the love of God, let's all use Motion Builder and let's tell Autodesk we love Motion Builder and we want to use it more so that they keep supporting it and fixing it and, and we have it for years to come. So with that being said, uh, if this video helped you or you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It makes me feel better and uh, helps encourage me to create more videos. I know I don't create them all that often, but uh, but when I do, uh, you know, I I. I I enjoy sharing what I what I know with the community. That being said, I hope you all have a excellent day and happy animating.